the Hack the Box Bug Bounty CTF hacked the system was a couple weeks ago, and I wanted to showcase some of the challenges. This is OXDF, and in this video, we're going to look at Jinja Care, a very easy level challenge uh, looking at a server side template injection in a Flask application. Um, we're going to look at some real Hacker One reports. We're going to do some background on Flask and templates and what SSTI actually is, and then we're going to solve the challenge. So um, let's go and take a look. So I've gotten I'm logged in here to the Hack the Box CTF platform, and we will check out the first one. So for all five of these challenges, they give us both the scenario as well as related bug bounty reports up front to look at and to sort of have an idea of what we're going after. So um, this is a web application designed to help citizens manage and access their COVID-19 vaccination records. Uh, platform allows users to store their history and get digital certificates. They've asked you to hunt for any security issues in their application and retrieve the flag stored on their site. Um, we'll take a look at the two reports. The first one is uh, a HackerOne report on uber.com, so real site. And it's actually from Orange Sai. If you don't know Orange Sai, he is a legend in the uh, bug bounty vulnerability research space. Um, go watch his Black Hat talks. They're all good. Um, yeah, so basically, um, in this one, if you change your profile name to this SSTI payload, and that'll make more, if you don't know what that look means right now, we're going to go over that. Um, and then you get an email, and it's your name has become 777. So really, what, if you know any Python, if you have a string times a number, you get that string repeated that many times. So there's seven sevens there. Um, so Python code was executed, which is what you want to see there. Um, and he shows other ways here. Um, we're not going to go through the whole report, but we'll go to the second report. Um, this one is for uh, Glo Glovo.com. I'm less familiar with this one, um, but it's another server-side template injection. Um, in this case, you're going to change your first name field to seven times seven in the brackets again, as they show here when you sign up. And eventually you get an email with a 49 in it, which, which again, seven times seven shows that, that, that this was executed as code and not just input, which is the real base vulnerability of an SSTI. Um, before we dive into the challenge, I wanted to walk through briefly just um, some real Flask basics. And if you've already done Flask many times, you probably know this, but um, you know, you might be able to learn something here too. Um, I've just opened up the first uh, Flask tutorial I came across Googling for it. And just to get some examples of what a standard Flask stuff looks like. And so you'll have a route that looks kind of like this, where you say that, you know, if they visit slash or slash index, then we're going to do some stuff and we're going to return the render template function. This is incredibly common um, with a template file, as well as some variables set to things. And so if we come up here, we can actually see here's an example of a template file. Here's index.html. And it's just some HTML, but except there's these places where you have double brackets and then variable names. And effectively what's happening here is in the template, these double brackets describe like places that are meant to be um, ex you know, filled in dynamically. And so it allows us to make really dynamic websites with these kind of mostly, you know, this these template pages are mostly static HTML, um, but then we can put things, and it gets more complicated in this. We can do loops and we can do if else's and we can do things so um, different menu bars show up and things. And so um, it's a very dynamic language. The key piece is that to understand that the template is, effectively code. You know, you don't want your users editing this. The things that pass into the template, where was I? Oh, so here's an example of an if else, but let's see. The things you pass in here, um, they, it, that, it's okay if that's completely user-based. So in this example here, if I pass in something malicious here for name, it doesn't matter because it's going to, what do they say, username equals name. So it's going to get pushed in here and it's already, you know, it's not, the thing that's getting rendered as code is this file. It's not the user input. Um, where this gets dangerous is when you have something like the render template string function. Anytime you are looking at code base and you see render template string, it's not the only way, but if you see that, you want to look for SSTI because this says, I don't want to read a file. I want to just take, a, I'm going to build myself a string that is the template, and then I'm going to render it by so filling the variables in it using this function. And usually, if, it was, if I was just trying to write a static file, I would have just written it as a file and didn't render template. But usually that means I'm trying to do something dynamically to make that template change based on user input. Um, and if user input is affecting the template, then user input basically can get to read, lead to remote code execution. Um, so um, that's our background on Flask and SSTI. Um, Server-side template injection exists in other frameworks, other Python frameworks, um, JavaScript frameworks, et cetera. Um, this is just one classic example. Um, and the payloads will look different. So. All right. With all that, I probably should have uh, spawned this before we were uh, talking. Oh, good, nice and fast. So 
So I go ahead and spawn the challenge. I will get myself a copy. I'm going to jump over to a VM here where I already have Burp up and running. Um, I have Foxy Proxy set up so that one of my rules is if there's a colon and a port, basically, uh, go ahead and send it through send it through Burp because most real websites don't do that. So I'm already going to be going through Burp. We'll just make sure that's the case. And we can see the stuff is loading in Burp perfectly here. Um, I want that because the first step is going to be just to evaluate the website, figure out what its purpose is, why does it, what are the functions it offers, um, and I want all the requests captured in Burp so I can look at those later. Um, I see a sign in button here. There's a verify page, a monitoring page, um, home looks like kind of what we're on already. Um, anything else down here as far as links, home, monitoring, verify? There's an email address here. If this was a box, I'd want to make sure I note that. Um, nothing else too interesting here. Um, we'll click on verify certificate and uh, put an ID in here. So maybe there's some functionality there we need to look into monitoring. Looks like some stuff, not much, in, no real user input here. Uh, let's go ahead and sign in. Hopefully, yeah, we have the option to create an account. So we'll do that. Uh, full name is OXDF, email address OXDF at OXDF.com, which I don't actually own. I would love to, but four character domains are expensive. I'll make a password and we'll log in. Uh, name can only contain letters and spaces. Okay. Uh, zero uh, OXDF. Let's do this again. And now we just log in. And let's see what else we have available to us. So we have a dashboard here. Um, we can download a certificate. Let's see what that looks like. Um, so we get a nice. Uh, it, look, you can see it actually downloaded a file to my downloads directory. We have a PDF there. Um, it says I'm fully vaccinated. I don't know how I told it that, but um, okay. Now, let's see what else do we got here. Let's, um, my profile, my medical history. I can add records, my vaccination records. Oh, they, they started me off with something. That's nice of them. Um, and uh, yeah. Now, when I think about SSTI, you will notice both those bug bounty reports. Um, the SSTI wasn't in the website. And the reason is, is because as a developer, if you're, if it is so easy to use these template files to make website pages that it's almost hard to make your site vulnerable to SSTI. Um, it is, you're just, you're, it's not a mistake you're going to make easily being lazy. It's not something you have to be careful against. The easy way to do it is to put it in a file and then pass variables into it. And that is just a very safe way to do it. Um, where you start to see this is, oh, but also when they change, when they change something in the background, I want to, generate an email and send it out. And that is where some things start to happen maybe more dynamically, and maybe you start to see these edge cases where SSTI comes in. So with that all said, the first place I was interested in is, huh, I wonder if this download certificate, you know, is possibly vulnerable. So clearly this, there's some stuff being generated on the fly. Um, I don't know where this UUID comes over. I certainly have control over the name. Um, the rest of this stuff probably doesn't, probably not. So question then becomes, you know, thinking back to those bug bounty reports, this is a very easy challenge. What if my name is OXDF, uh, start a template, and uh, seven times seven? Oops. And if we save the changes, oh, I have to give it a birth all of a sudden. 01, 01, uh, 2000. Oh, 2000. Um, okay, 1000. I don't know why that was not taking. Um, save the changes. Awesome. Um, let's go over here and take a look and we can download certificate again and cool. So you can see now it says OXDF, instead of saying squiggly squiggly seven times seven, it says 49, which means that 49 evaluated, which means I injected into the template and I was able to get a change what was rendered as a change of the template that was rendered. And that's bad. Um, now at this point, there's a few things that are worth looking at. Um, let's go, uh, Payload all the things, SSTI chart. I don't know if this will work. We'll see if we can find it. Um, probably should have pulled this up ahead of time, but um, yeah, here we go. I love this chart. Um, it kind of gives us a different set of different templates you can put in here to, to get to different languages. So, you know, if we do seven times seven, um, it's next actually recommend. Now, this is not actually super useful. I guess we should maybe just start with seven times quote seven, um, although we still end up with Jinja, Twig, or Unknown. Um, we could try that real quick, but what I actually want to show is and something I, I do probably I should have done before I started looking for vulnerabilities. I do this on every box is let's, let's look at, let's see what we can figure out about the tech stack. Um, we could put, you know, I actually have the Wappalizer plugin here and this tells me, 
got some leaflet tail but it doesn't it doesn't tell me it doesn't tell me it's flask that's for sure now i can guess it's ginger because the title is ginger care um and ginger is the flask templating templating language um but i don't i don't want to just go by that um we can look at the html request or the, the response headers here um but all i get here is that the server is nginx which is very common for nginx to sort of stomp out into any of the servers that uh server headers that come behind it and just say nginx. Um, so we don't get much there. My favorite way to do this, honestly, um, and, and a lot of big sites will probably have custom 404 pages, but uh, for something like this, like let's just visit slash OXDF and we get a 404 not found. And that's what I would expect to get. Um, but this is something I've done on my website, uh, 404 pages. So here, uh, if we go in here, we can now say, okay, well, how do I find what is this not found requested URL is not found in the server. Check your, you know, and spell it, try again. If we scroll down here to flask, that is exactly, that is exactly what we got here. This is the 404. We can even um, control U to look at it and look at this page here and pull this off and maybe can I push it over? Yeah. So you can see here this, uh, let's see, where's that? You know, this is literally HTML lang equals, this is the exact thing coming back. So someone could have copied this and put it on another framework, but typically if you see this, you know this is Flask. And these are all, every one of these things I've documented here are different. So um, we have a pretty good idea this is Flask. Uh, all right, let's keep going then. So now we want, we've got Flask. How do we, um, I love the payloads, all the things repo for figuring out this kind of stuff. Let's go to Python. Uh, we're down in Jinja and remote code execution. There's a nice simple one. This looks short and simple. So what we're going to do here, um, you don't have, you can't run complete Python. You don't have access to all Python in here, but basically we're going to kind of like cheat our way into the built-ins and importing the OS function and calling the popen function all in this one liner. Um, and if it works, we're going to get the output of it. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Uh, we're going to change our personal info. In fact, why don't I do this? I'm going to open this in a new tab. Okay. So back here, I'll choose dashboard here. We can close some of this stuff. And let's change this to, boom. So this should run the ID command. And we can go over here and download a certificate. And boom, it did not. So you can, it looks like I'm missing, maybe I'm missing the, uh, close you. Oh, I'm missing the start of the payload. So that, that, that explains it. I'll save the changes. Come back here, download the certificate. And boom, we ran the ID command on the server. Um, so now from here, um, I could try to get a reverse shell. It's a little trickier. You know, if I was in the hack the box labs on a VPN, I'd have, I'd have a direct connection. Um, instead I'm behind a NAT on my, like in my world, I could run something like ngrok and try to catch a shell to start. I think it's probably easier just to say, okay, let's come back here and we just don't need to find a flag. So what if we change the ID command to, uh, LS slash save changes, download certificate. And boom, this is the slash directory. And right away we see a flag.txt right there. Let's close that. Let's come back here. And now we just want to do uh, cat, oops, flag.txt. Save my, my, my new name. Come down here, generate a certificate. And boom, we got, we got ourselves. Hack the box, very easy SSDI write and a flag. So this is, this is our flag. Um, if we want to be super complete about it. We can run back over to, where's my, Thing, submit, and boom. Um, SSTI is awesome. It's a fun vulnerability to exploit. Um, it it is something that you you know realistically again you're probably not going to see it in like web pages. It's much less common, but it, it's going to show up in these places where um, you know oh it's not just as simple as like calculate some variables, fill a template, and send it back as a page. It's more like oh and in the background I want to send an email. I want to generate a PDF. I want to do these kinds of things. So um, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, there probably will be more of these to come. Uh, and I'll see you next time.